Hey guys, Mikey here with Tactic California. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today we're gonna to discuss three Glock modifications that everybody must do to their Glocks. Right, guys three mandatory Glock upgrades here we go these are ones that I cannot live without that I highly recommend to everybody who's gonna get a Glock it might sound scary at first to be doing modifications and stuff but I assure you these are uh, safe and they're very uh, necessary improvements according to me okay so let's dive right into it the three mandatory things you need to do are upgrade your sights undercut the trigger guard and cut out the area around the magazine release button so let's get into these each individually. Number one, the sights. Why do I say we need to upgrade them? Well, one, they're chintzy. They're plastic, they're crap, they're gonna break. I've broken them, I know you guys out there have probably broken them too. The sights just suck on, the, on a Glock. Let's be real, it's probably the Achilles heel of a Glock, and nobody wants to talk about the fact that Glock has a weakness, but it's a reality. The Glock sights are an absolute weakness. The sight picture's weird with like the field goal, post, rear sight, white stuff, and the dot, if you actually do a proper sight picture of equal height, equal light on the sights, the front dot of the front sight actually gets cut in half. What this ends up doing is causing people to shoot high with Glocks because they don't want to cut that dot in half. Their eye doesn't want to do that. So what they end up doing is positioning the front post slightly higher so that they can see the full white dot inside the white goal post and voila, they're shooting high, okay? So it's a common thing that happens with Glocks. Another reason we need to upgrade our sights is nighttime operations, okay? Now I'm not talking about some cool, ultra, you know, tactical dude, but just the basic home defense handgun should have night sights on it. Uh, I'll tell you this, once that first round goes off and that you see that muzzle flash at the end of your barrel, you're probably not gonna see your night sights anyway. However, that first shot counts, okay? That first shot could be the one shot that either wins or loses a gunfight. We really need to make sure that first shot counts. And while you've got your, maybe you have adapted night vision already, which is great, like you, you know, you've been sleeping for a while or whatever and it's already dark, you pick up your handgun and you see the tritium inserts in your sights and you line up those three dots and you pull that trigger. That's gonna help you get sights on target the very first trigger pull. And honestly, for me, it's very comforting having that tritium. I do keep, because uh, I don't have children in the house yet, and my wife and I are both uh, trained very well, I do keep loaded firearms sitting on my nightstand. And it's nice to just, when I wake up in the middle of the night, I think I hear something and I look over, sometimes all you can see is those tritium sights. It really helps you see where the gun is so you can get to the gun quickly. So again, gotta upgrade these sights, guys. And the last reason we need to upgrade the sights, obviously is one-handed manipulations. If you find yourself in a place where you cannot use this hand, whether you get injured, which is the one we practice a lot, you know, my hand's injured, so now I can only shoot one-handed or whatever, or you're protecting loved ones. Uh, I've done training um, uh, with, with people before where you practice as if you're pushing loved ones behind you as you're moving rearward, shooting one-handed. Well, what happens if you get a stoppage in the gun or you need to reload the gun? You gotta be able to run this gun one-handed. Now, the ledge on the rear sight gives you a perfect place to run the gun. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice ledge. You can catch it on your belt and rack it off your belt, catch it on your boot, rack it off your boot, off a tire. Uh, in a pinch, you could just straight up probably just dig it into a wall and rack it. The point is it gives you something, uh, an area of which a strong shelf in which you can then run that gun one-handed. Very important feature in order to make sure that you're covering all your bases so that you can stack the deck in your favor and win that gunfight. So undercutting the trigger guard. This is number two. And the reason I suggest this is threefold. Getting in here with a Dremel is not that difficult. Literally you just take a sanding disc of a Dremel and just come up, take out some material, Feel it in your hand, see if it feels comfortable. If not, keep going till it feels comfortable. Make sure not to cut through the trigger guard all the way. But uh, it's very important for me. One is obviously comfort, okay? We need to make sure that we're comfortable while shooting. Because after all, if, if I don't want to shoot the gun, if it's uncomfortable for me to shoot, and I talk to this a lot uh, with customers in the store, if it's an uncomfortable a gun to shoot, you're probably not going to want to go out and train with it, which means you're probably not gonna be as proficient with it when the time comes and you need to be very proficient with it. So comfort is actually important with the handgun. Uh, I've heard a very good phrase I like, it says, 
get whatever, you know, your first gun should be uh, whatever gun fits your hand the best, and the second gun you should get is a Glock. Um, so we know that the Glock isn't as ergonomic as we like, but you can make it that way with, with several modifications, and one of which is undercutting the trigger guard. And then just chamfer the edges right here, just kind of round them off. I just usually take some sandpaper and kind of round the corner, just so it doesn't dig into you on the corner and it's nice and round all the way over. Another reason to undercut the trigger guard is fatigue. Uh, honestly, in training longer. So what I mean by that is uh, most people who've shot Glocks in any sort of length will tell you that their middle finger knuckle gets red and sore to the point where you can even bruise it. And I've seen very few videos of people getting a blister so bad they bleed right there. Okay, now that's pretty dramatic. Most people who shoot Glocks don't have that problem, but a very few do. And, and for me, it was no exception. It was very irritable to shoot the gun without that undercut there. Now, who cares about fatigue? Well, again, the longer you can stay out on, presented on target, putting rounds on target, probably the more successful you're gonna be. If it's starting to hurt so bad that you need to take your firing hand off the gun, that's no good. Also, training longer. If you fatigue quicker, you'll spend less time training. And again, proficiency with the firearm is a must when it comes to gun uh, handling and just a gun fight in general, guys. So definitely, again, fatigue is another issue and that's why we're undercutting this trigger guard. And the last reason to do so is the fact that because you can get your hand a little higher, you can get your the rest of your hand a little bit higher as well, more comfortably, this is gonna allow you to get a higher tang grip. The higher you can get that hand, the more recoil management you're gonna be able to induce on this firearm. Because what happens, it's called bore axis. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this or not, but we'll go over it real quick. If I hold the gun down here and the gun recoils, I have less leverage on it and it has more leverage on me. The higher I grip the gun, the less leverage it has against me and the more leverage I have against it from recoiling up and back. So. Getting that hand high up with this undercut is a very good possibility and a good reality for me. I'm able to get my hand really high up there to the point where I actually need grip force adapters so I don't get slide bite because I got pretty meaty hands. But again, overall getting that hand up, that's definitely a plus. Last but not least is the magazine cutout. Now, a lot of people just say, why don't you put an extended magazine release button on and so you don't have to modify the frame. The reason I don't like the extended magazine releases for Glocks, at least the Gen 3s, is pretty much twofold. One, it's it's so big, it comes out so far uh, that it's actually uncomfortable for my hand when I grip the gun. Uh, it's actually irritating me. It's got some pretty, you know, not sharp, but fine corners, and it just kind of digs into my hand. I don't really like the feel of those. Two, if I'm feeling the magazine release button with my hand while I'm gripping the firearm, guess what? That means I can release the magazine while I'm gripping the firearm. That's no good, we can't allow that to happen. That extended one comes out just too far in my opinion and uh, you can too easily accidentally drop that magazine out of the gun and then now you're really screwed. So don't get those extended ones if you can help it. Now on every firearm that I've ever held, besides uh, an ambidextrous um, handgun of some kind, you're gonna have to change your firing grip in order to release that magazine button or use your offhand. So I don't know if you guys can see this very well in the video, but my thumb can't reach the button. I just can't. I cannot reach that button in my standard firing grip, okay? And that's a good thing. You don't wanna accidentally hit that button while firing like we talked about. So you're gonna have to change the grip on the firearm to get enough leverage to come down to push that button. Now, really it's not that big of a deal, but the less I have to change my grip, the better. Now Glocks and their magazine releases are notorious for being flush. The magazine release button is pretty much flush with the frame of the, of the firearm, and that causes you to not even be able to just switch slightly and push, which is how I'm able to do it now, but you have to literally almost rotate your grip 90 degrees and push straight down onto the button in order to release the magazine. It's really kind of funky, and I, I wish they would have redesigned it on the Gen 3s, but the Gen 4 solved the issue with the bigger button. However, we're using a Gen 3, so what I do is I scallop the area around the magazine release button, and this allows my thumb to reach it without having to turn quite as far. So being able to reload with uh, without changing my grip as much causes me then to get the gun back into a firing grip slightly faster. Now this might be a fraction of a second, but I'll take a fraction of a second in a gunfight if I can get it. So that's exactly why we're doing it. And the last and final reason for definitely cutting out this area around the magazine release button, of course, is consistent reloads. Now again, we talked, you know, how we talked about the flush. Well, that's basically it. Um, 
you gotta sit there and mash on it and find that button. I can't tell you how many customers I've handed a Glock and they just sit there and they're, they're new gun owners and they just struggle with getting the magazine out of the gun and you're thinking like, wow, how, how is it that hard? Well, all of us who have been shooting Glocks for a long time know to really rotate our, our grip and we don't really think about it. And these people are just sitting there kind of mash, 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 mash and they're not getting the mag out. Well, that's a perfect example of an inconsistent uh, way to reload the gun. If, if you're gonna sit there and mash around and try to figure it out, that's not very consistent. So scalloping the area around the magazine release button allows the magazine release button to stand tall by itself without protruding too much that I might accidentally hit it in a way that now I can push that button consistently every single time. So these are the three Glock upgrades I think everybody should do. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you like this video, please click like down below and subscribe to the channel for more Glock tips and other gun reviews we got coming your way. I'm Micah with Tactic California. Thanks for watching.